Hey guys, my name is Haley, and today I'm going to be filming another wrap-up because apparently I'm just on a reading kick this year, which I didn't think I was going to be, so surprise to me because I read 18 books in February, some of which I already wrapped up in my last wrap-up, but we have more, and audiobooks have just been taking over my life, basically, because they're so easy to listen to at work most of the time. So a lot of those have been read, and we're going to get right on into the wrap-up. So the first thing that I picked up since the last time that I did my wrap up was A Silent Voice Volume 1 by Yoshitoki Oima. I probably butchered that, but this is the first and I believe a seven book series about a little girl. I don't even think she's that little. They're younger when they meet and this boy ends up bullying her for her hearing impairment because she's hard of hearing. And it's honestly really cute. This one is specifically told in flashbacks, which I thought was really interesting. And I think it was done well because I don't always love flashbacks, but this definitely helped with the pacing of the story. And I gave this four stars. I'm definitely going to continue with the series when I'm actually buying books because my library doesn't have a lot of manga. So that's why I don't read a lot of manga because I have to buy it. And some of them are long, but this one's only seven books. So I will eventually be continuing with this series. I read a graphic novel and that is drama and this was adorable. I read this in one sitting as you do with graphic novels and this was about a stage crew of a middle school production like a musical and it was the cutest thing. <laughs> it was adorable like it made me emotional. I've never read a book about like the stage crew so I thought that was a really fun take on it. The artwork is really cute and I just I loved it. This was probably one of my favorite graphic novels I've ever read. That's all I have to say. It's just adorable. If you really like theater and want something super adorable, definitely recommend this one. And then I read the sequel to This Mortal Coil, that being This Cruel Design. Also, look at this cover. That blue. These covers are stunning. I love them so much. But anyway, this is the second book in what I think is going to be a trilogy. I'm not sure if it's going to be longer than that. I know the third book comes out like later this year. But I gave this 4.5 stars. I really, really like this series. I think it's underrated. Like, I don't see very many people talking about it. Only, like, a couple. Like, I heard of it through Jade at Bedtime Bookworm. Because she talks about it a lot. And I think she even said that it's pretty underrated for a series. Like, a YA dystopian, like, sci-fi. It's, like, right in the middle there. But it's really interesting. And I love the, like tech in this and the genetic aspect of it. I think it's really cool. It's really fun. This had a little bit more romance than I would have cared for, but I thought it was fine. Like, it didn't bother me. And you know that a lot of romances do bother me. So I thought this was a pretty solid installment in the series, and I can't wait for the next one to come out. And then next up, and probably last, I think, of my physical books, <laughs> I read Be More Chill in like two sittings on like a Saturday two weeks ago. <laughs> and the only reason I read this is because I'm quite a fan of the musical that has recently just gone to Broadway and I've been following it for a while because I found the song Michael in the Bathroom which one of my friends like did for an event and he made me listen to it and I was like I actually really like this song so if you want a fun little song that kind of has anxiety rep that is musical theatery please go check that out I'll link a video of George Salazar singing singing it down below. Also, I think this is a really fun cover even though some of it is like inappropriate so I'll try not to like hold this up for too long but I gave this like a 2.75 stars. I t it's fine. I honestly think the musical does a better job of portraying these characters. Like there's not a lot of depth to them ex besides like our main character and it seems super surface level and there's like a weird sci-fi aspect to it but I think the musical and the music that Joe Iconis wrote for this actually supports Ed Vizzini's characters more. So I think I would prefer and recommend you listen to the musical soundtrack over reading this, but if you really want to read it and can stand like teenage boy, like being a teenage boy's heads, which I cannot, <laughs> then you could probably read this. It's really weird. I will tell you that. It's about this pill that this young teenage boy just discovers that you can take that's supposed to like give you a voice in your head that tells you how to be cool and more chill hence the title so yeah that is the basic premise and it's like a weird sci-fi thing but it's it's funny i think it's funny 
Next up, I listened to the audiobook of The Long Way to a Small Angry Planet by Becky Chambers. I've wanted to read this book for a while and then I was kind of unsure about it because I heard it was like a character driven sci-fi. And if you don't know, I'm not a super character driven person. I prefer plot driven novels. But this one actually like caught my attention by like halfway through. I was really invested in these characters. And this is a companion series, which I knew going in, but I was not prepared for the amount of like or rather the lack of overlap between the books because I did read the second one, spoiler for the next book. But I thought this was fun. I gave this like a solid four stars. If this edition ever goes back on Book Depository, I might buy it. I really like the world that this opened up. This sci-fi, everybody lives in space. There's all kinds of different species and I liked some of the talk they had about species and like species involvement and that type of thing. I thought this was a solid sci-fi. So if you're really into sci-fi and you like character-driven things, this is probably a good one for you if you struggle with like plot-driven sci-fi. And then next up, I listened to the audio of A Closed in Common Orbit, which is the second book in this like companion trilogy and like quite frankly I did not like this one as much. I missed our cast of characters from the first one. I feel like this didn't explain the world that much more and it mostly took place in like two places compared to like the bunch of places and more like sci-fi action aspects of the first one and quite frankly I really didn't like one of our characters. There was like a lot of this was told in flashbacks of one of the girls that we meet in like the present timeline but it's her past and it's like her growing up as like a teenager being raised by an AI. And while I really like the like AI talk in this series, I really did not appreciate having to listen to this like angry teenage angst child. It was just so annoying and like just constant F-bombs and cussing just cause you can and like, no, that's not my cup of tea. So that did bring this down for me and I gave this one a three stars. I am gonna read the last book and I hope that I enjoy it more than this one because the first one was pretty good and this one was not my favorite. Next up, I read one of my most anticipated books of the year and that is Lethal White by Robert Galbraith, which as we know is JK Rowling. And wow, this was awesome. <laughs> I think I gave this like a 4.5, 4.75 stars because this is one of those books that there's like one character, sometimes two, that the other one doesn't show up as much, that just drives me up a wall because I hate him so much. <laughs> like he makes me physically angry when he's on the page because he treats one of our other characters so horribly and it's such a emotionally abusive relationship. So if you can't handle emotional abuse, if that's a trigger for you, please don't read this series because it gets worse and worse as the series goes and I can't stand the guy. <laughs> but other than that, I really like the mysteries in this series. I think it's a really fun mystery. I never can like guess them. I think I guessed a little bit in the third book, but like other than that, as per JK Rowling style, she's really good at like pacing things. Some people say that this series is slow or like the first couple are slow, but I never found them. So I always read, read these books pretty fast. And obviously I love Cormoran, I love Robin. I love their like dynamic and their relationship and their friendship. I love everything about it. And I just, yeah, there's those two X characters. I can't, I can't do it. Or like one of them is in a current relationship and the ending of the last book just like hurt me and yeah. This is a great installment. I highly recommend this series to everybody. Unless you can't handle emotional abuse, then please tread carefully in this because it gets pretty bad to the point where I was like so angry. <laughs> I cannot stress that enough. I can't wait for another book in this series. This one just came out, so it's probably gonna take another like four years for JK Rowling to come out with the fifth book, which is just very unfortunate because this was going in the right direction for our two main characters. Obviously I can't say much because this is like the fourth book in a series. <laughs> and then I very quickly picked up Sylvain Nouvelle's new book, which he wrote the Themis Files trilogy, which I read last year and loved. And I honestly didn't know he was coming out with a new book until I saw it in somebody else's like most anticipated releases and I was like, what? And it's more of a novella than like a full book, but it's very, very powerful. Like this starts off as just like, someone coming in to take an immigration test to like become a citizen of Great Britain. And then it turns into a wild ride that is has a ton of sci-fi aspects. So I listened to the audiobook. The audiobook is excellent. Highly recommend that medium if you have the option. And it's only like a two hour, hour and a half audiobook. Like it's really short. It's only like a hundred and some pages. 
And honestly, I couldn't have put it down if I had wanted to. It's a crazy ride. You should definitely read it in one sitting and definitely recommend I'll be picking up anything that Sylvain Nouvelle puts out because his writing just blows me away. And I love the social commentary in this. Definitely pick it up. <laughs> that was not very descriptive of what it's about, but I honestly think this book is one that you have to like go in knowing absolutely nothing because quite frankly, I just heard Sylvain Nouvelle's new book. Okay, I'll read it. And it was great. I picked up the audiobook of the next book in the Dresden Files, which is The Death Masks, which I believe is book six, I think we're on. So I'm about halfway through the series right now, which these books read so fast. So I don't think it'll take me that long to get through the series as long as I keep picking up the audiobooks, especially with how fast I've been getting through audiobooks lately. <laughs> and I will say one thing about this series that actually would normally bother me in like an urban fantasy or even some fantasies is the way that religion is portrayed. Like there is a couple Christian characters in this and one of Harry Dresden's best friends is a Christian and like his Christianity and his faith manifests in like a supernatural way which I actually don't hate which normally would really bother me when like Christianity is being put in that light but I think that Jim Butcher handles it like very delicately like he doesn't make fun of the religion he's very careful about how he treads around it and like just gives it a cool twist which I think is a different way of approaching it which I appreciate because normally I hate the way that religion is handled in like fantasy settings especially if it's supposed to be Christianity because that's a very touchy subject for me being a Christian myself. Part of the mystery in this one has to do with the shroud that like the wrapping that Jesus was wrapped in went before he rose from the dead which apparently has like supernatural powers in this story and people were after it and it was just a weird time but I didn't like nothing about it really bothered me which I think is a good sign so if you are a Christian you want to read this series I will say be careful about like the sexual content there is some and I honestly normally skip over them in the audiobook because I don't want to listen to it <laughs> like it's just something that I don't like reading about but there's normally only like one or two every book or two in the series so it's not like super prevalent but it is there i do like the supernatural aspect of how christianity and like faith is handled in this even though it's not a huge part of it it does crop up from time to time since michael is a christian and it's a big part of his powers but yeah i appreciate harry dresden his humor is hilarious that's the main reason that i really love this series because i love him as a character and i like the way that jim butcher is exploring his like weaknesses and also him fighting out his strengths and his struggle with like good and evil that type of thing i found it really interesting and i'm having a great time reading this series and then the last book that i have most recently read was the night tiger by yang zi chu and this is a really weird book <laughs> so it's about this weird situation and it's like malaysian culture where like you're supposed to be buried with all of your like body parts otherwise you could want your soul could wander the world for like a certain amount of time so when somebody loses a finger this kid goes on a quest to go find the finger so it can be buried with him so his soul can be at rest and it's a lot of Malaysian culture, which I found really interesting. I don't think I've ever read a book set in Malaysia. And it talks about like the way that women are treated and stuff, especially in this time period. And it was just a weird time. <laughs> I did like the audiobook. I thought the audiobook was well done, but I gave this like a three stars, maybe a 3.25 because there was the creepiest, most not up my alley romance. So yeah. It does involve step siblings, which again, they're not actually related, but like, I didn't like it. <laughs> and I didn't like reading it. Like I was really grossed out. And it wasn't even just cause they were step siblings. It also, there were other aspects of the relationship I really didn't like, but yeah, it was creepy. It was weird. If you want a really weird book and you don't mind like kind of creepy romances, which I don't know why people want to read about that or why that's a thing in books, but yeah, this was just okay. And I gave it three stars. Once again, not sure if I recommend that last one because it's not great, but 
these are the books that I have to hold up of the ones that I've read in February, even though there were a lot more. And there's actually two Christian ones, which I'm going to do a separate video on, because I think I'm going to do a separate video on my Christian nonfiction and fiction this year. So that'll be coming out soon. But these are the books that I read this month, or some of them. Thank you all for watching, and I will see all of you guys next time.